in this metal material, we'll be taking a look at the brush surfacing. Now it's starting to get a bit more complex and with these scuff marks in particular, it's getting more grungy. So we'll be seeing how we did that. We're also going to be looking at this rust effect and how to get that along the corners. And on top of that, we'll be looking at the highlights that you see around the edges of those exposed areas, as well as some of the highlights that are on their beams. This is the final map for the brush strokes. If we look closely, it's there's a lot of splattering effects, but also these scuff marks that go through the paint. So that was all done with this. Even though this is the more complex of the three materials we've looked at in terms of these brush strokes, it can get much more complex and it would also encourage exposing parameters to get more control over these type of effects. So this one was just a disc with, with a non-uniform blur. There's a reason why there's a gradient to it, but we'll explain that later. But this was just created using asymmetry and it's pushing in this angle. So it's just adding a gradient to the shape. Next, we use a clouds too. And I mean, this could be any noise. Other noises might work better for you. So experiment. But with this directional warp, it's pulling down left. And then the one right after it is pulling in the opposite direction. So what that does is create a sort of pull and push effect, which makes it feel a bit more liquid like. And then after that, just using the transform 2D to center. Don't worry too much about things like this unless it becomes a problem later, but in most cases it, it's fine. And then after just using that anastrophic noise that's blurred with a histogram scan for more control, and that's being overlaid the brush stroke. After that, we push the direction of the brush stroke and give it a slight curve by using a paraboloid that's blurred. So that's it before, and that's it with. And then just a tile sampler with the typical settings. The color random here was useful. That helps give depth to your texture. So the less you have, the more flat it becomes. So depending how much depth you want, generally the more depth you've got, the more worn, worn out your texture will fill. And then the auto levels to get full range and that's being plugged into a gradient map. Now, before we typically used very similar colors, in this one there's actually a contrasting color. That was just a personal choice for this particular material. I think because it's more of a beaten up on material. So it was fun just to experiment with different colors early on. With this mip mapping, it didn't quite pick the color that I wanted. I was after more of this kind of color. So if that happens, you can always just add in a HSL to tweak it slightly. In this case, get more saturation to help you get the color that you want. And then just overlaying, uh, sorry, just adding that on top, but not at full opacity. So this is it without, this is it with full. That's a bit too much. So something like this feels good. And then just further refinement with a HSL and then the breaking it up with a luminosity mask. Now, with this non-uniform blur grayscale, it's actually helping to create a fall off to the to these brushes. So to show you, we can decrease the intensity and it becomes really flat. 
Even this could be quite a nice style. It's still flat, but it's got some depth to it. And as we bring that up, we start to get more and more fall off. So depending on what type of effect you're going for, it's worth adding in this non-uniform blur just so that you can try different intensities. And using this map, we can plug it into another color to create a, another gradient map to create a rust uh, albedo map, such as this. And this was just useful throughout the, for whenever you need rust. So in this case, I have a rust mask here and we can use the rust map to use for the albedo rather than just using a standard flat color. So if we look at this here, so if you don't want it to be that flat, you can add a bit more of visual interest by creating a, a map like this. But of course you can just use your brush strokes just to get uh, a really quick result. For the exposed rust, notice that it's mostly appearing along the sides as well as the bottoms of the panels. This was done with a mask that looks like this, or this rather. And this came from a early height map. Notice the gradients. This is for the tilting, uh, the lighter areas represent the parts of the metal panels that are coming out. So this is plugged into a height two world units and then a curve just move, then a edge slit. This is just mostly default settings. So if we add that here, you might get something like this, but this can be, all you have to do is just ramp up this levels to something like this. You might want to smooth this a bit, something like that. And then you plug that into a directional blur set to angle vertical, going straight up with intensity quite high. That's it before. And this is it with, and this is just get starting to get rid of those horizontal parts. And if we plug that into a histogram scan, it's going to pick up the lighter parts first. So we can ensure that we get just these vertical masks. And then if you run that through a blur HQ and a levels can make sure that it's more larger, thicker clusters. So you can use these controls to bring your rust in or out. And then using a crystal two with a blur, like before we've, uh, we can create a more scattered painterly effect to our simple shapes. And then just to clean it up a bit, you can run it through another blur HQ and levels. And then here added a slope blur. This is a cells one that's being, instead of just using a cells one that's the same everywhere, kind of wanted to have some areas where it's not cells one using a Gaussian noise and a scan that's then multiplied on top just so you, we don't have cells one everywhere. And so this is creating this, this effect, but not everywhere because of that Gaussian noise. It looks really, doesn't look great here, but you don't really notice this in the actual final map. So, but it does have a, it does improve it. So I'll try and show that. So in the roughness, we can see it here. Actually, let's take a look at the actual material. So 
let's look at this bit here and then take out that slope blur so it just gives it a bit more of those hard edges more angular shapes and then this is just run into the albedo with the rust map that we showed before I've not mentioned the horizontal parts so this was getting a histogram select from a curvature smooth and then you can just move this around to get what you need like in something like this and then using a scan to just have further control later on so you can dictate how much it goes up and then with a slope blur there's a tile sampler with loads of vertical lines that are then blurred and this creates this kind of square scraping effect and then that's just being added on top of the rust mask now for the highlights that you get that appear here and there for the exposed areas as well as the there's also some shadowing as well going on so those main, mainly use the rust, rust mask that we used before and let's go with shadows first so for shadows bring in our rust mask and clump it and then invert it and then run that through a shadows and you can see here you're starting to get the outlines and then invert that so now we're getting a mask for the shadow areas but we don't want the shadow to appear absolutely all along the exposed areas so to break that up a bit we can use a Gaussian noise and the levels to clamp it out a bit and then this just breaks up our mask now for the the highlights we have to sort of invert that so that uses just this mask but without the invert and then with a shadows notice that it's now on the outer side so that creates some edge highlights really clamped it here just to get some straight lines and then again using a Gaussian noise with a levels to start to break that up a little for this use a slope blur with a fractal sun base to rough up the area because when painting highlights along edges you don't want it to be completely straight you kind of want it to not only be fading in and out but to change the width of the line it shouldn't be a consistent line all the way through so this is a way just to bring it in and out as well as breaking up the intensity of the mask so these are then plugged into these two so we've got this mask and for now just using a black material that's been brought down to half opacity so this is it without this is it with so without and with and then the highlights as well with this color so without and with and just helps pop it pop out parts of the exposed metal especially the mainly the rust parts for the beams notice that there's these highlights again it it's not consistent it doesn't go all the way through so like more older traditional texturing methods where it fades in and out that can be created with again just using a Gaussian noise to go through it so 
we use a height to normal again and a curve to smooth. Used a high pass as well, just to get some more extra control along with a histogram select so that we can pick out the parts that we want. And then this Gaussian noise is being placed on top. So you're getting, even like this, you get light areas at the top and then, so it's not just along the sides, but it's along the surface as well. So this is quite a nice map for highlights because it's not consistent all the way through and there's fall off as well. And then using a levels, try and so that it's not fall off everywhere, but you do get some areas where it's sharp. So like this, there's little fall off, but then here there's lots of fall off just to get more variation in your brush strokes for the edge edges. And then that's just being added on top. That's probably too saturated. We could bring that down a little. So this is it with, and this is it without. Without. With. When it comes to roughness and stylized materials, just like your albedo and height maps, you'll want to avoid adding noise. So when finalizing your roughness map, just check it for noise. Make sure that you have areas of flatness in there and just avoid high frequency noise in general. For smaller details, try to keep them as flat colors, such as these beams and bolts. Most of the time, this is enough. Only add subtle differences in your roughness of smaller details if you have the time and patience with the material you're working on. Also try to break up key features of your roughness map. So like the rust, beams, bolts, so that you can control them individually with masks. So for here, for example, we can darken that, lighten it individually, rather than just converting a height map from the later stages of the chain. That wraps up this metal. We mainly looked at creating more complex brush patterns. I'd recommend trying to create your own brush generator that you can use across multiple materials using similar techniques shown here. We also took a look at how the shadow node can be especially useful for creating highlights and shadows that are broken up and have a more hand-painted feel rather than just a consistent line. Next, we'll be moving away from the brush patterns and creating some more organic shapes with grass and vegetation.